Dueling Dialogues presents His and Hers with Grace Matthews, The Hammer, and Connor Murphy. Welcome to episode 11 of His and Hers with Grace Matthews and the Caddy Man in the heart of the USA, Springfield, Missouri. Hi. Hello, hello. Hey, hey, hey. What's happening up north? Uh, chilly. This is the ah. co- coldest spring on record. Wow. Yuck. Yeah, yuck. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Actually, we're under a heat index right now. We yeah, got, i seen that. I'm jealous. We yeah. got, well, the sun's not, but boy, the humidity is cranking. It's high, yeah. high, high. Sticky, as we say here yeah. in the Ozarks. Very sticky. Exactly. Yeah, where you, well, put, where you put on a t-shirt and 30 seconds later it's stuck to you? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, fun. Yeah. Pit hangers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are talking OCD and family, part two. Right. And, um, but what we always like to say is, we like to answer the question, why did we do this show? And of course, what we always say is we suck at it. <laughs> And so hopefully you can learn from our mistakes. Perfect. And so OCD as a family problem. We talked about this the other day. Right. And so we're going to go on. Um, we are talking about this uh, the, uh, as chapter six from Brain Lock. OCD as a family. That's kind of our guide. The book is by Jeffrey Schwartz, MD. Sometimes someone with OCD will use their compulsions to control others. Okay? Okay. Um, The author of this book says that people with OCD can be pretty successful at the right job, like a mechanic or a computer program. So OCD can actually help with those jobs. When you give them the job of, you know, managing other people, Sometimes it doesn't go so well Ah, because they, first of all, their compulsions make that hard or they will be the opposite and use the people to fulfill their compulsions. Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything to say about that? You know, the thing, uh, a person with OCD like myself, when the job or the if your if your job if you can get it to where you can do it day after day the same way the same way the same way makes it easy. However, you throw a kink in there, you change something, you change procedures. If the, you won't see probably too many people with OCD that are managers because there's too many variables. They have to to. Uh, Adapt. Well, yeah, adapt, fly by the seat of their pants, yeah. make make decisions uh, spur of the moment. Right. An OCD person, that, that throws them into anxiety because it has broken their chain. They are out of their comfort zone. They have to think. They can't just do it. And uh, that really causes uh, problems. Uh, exactly. And much like marriages... OCD people tend to be, to not trust other people very much. So it's very difficult when you have employees to be so distrustful. Right. It, it's tough on marriages for those people that do distrust their spouses, you know, because of the OCD. Right. So oftentimes people with OCD work at a level below themselves. Because like we discussed before, uh, much like some of the well-known cases, people with OCD are generally very intelligent. Right. You know, I don't talk a lot about when I used to work as a headhunter and an HR person. And we would have these engineers come in and they they could hardly do an interview. (laughs) Right. Because they couldn't really talk for themselves. I had a couple of guys that brought somebody to talk and speak for them in an interview. Oh, wow. I mean, they were so brilliant and so OC, much like, um, you know, Howard Hughes. Right. That they, they couldn't talk. 
They, they couldn't talk to a normal person. Well, you know, and a lot of times, too, they don't want to. Yeah. They just want to that's, give me the task, true. let me do it, and I'll do it, and leave me alone. I'll figure out how to do it. I'll figure out how to do it the fastest way. I'll get it in order, and I'll whip it out. Exactly. You know, uh, all this talk, it, it brings me back to my days um, working for the communications company and having a lot of employees under me. And now I understand some of those employees a, a lot better because I believe that they had OCD and and some of them severely. Oh, yeah. More than you th- more than you think. I guarantee you as bad as you think it was, it's five to 20 times worse. Well, and some professions sort of attract those people, especially um, computer type work. Right, exactly. Because it, like you were saying, those people, that those engineers that you were talking about, there's, there's right. computer scientists that are exactly the same. Oh, yeah. I would say a lot of IT people. Right. Yeah. A, a whole lot. So we all know them. We all know these people and the, the careers they gravitate towards. And we all, and, and I think we can all understand that um, this is very difficult on marriages. It's very difficult in the workplace for that social environment. Right. Because they can use their OC behaviors to control other people. They can also use their OC behaviors to find people that act as enablers. Right. Uh, the workplace is sort of a, oh my gosh, it's kind of almost a dangerous place for you. It's a very dangerous place. Because that's the place where it can become so bad. It becomes Be- controlling right. even more so. And the OCD person will, it's just, will hunt out the person that will enable them in their quest to make sure they get their compulsions done. Exactly. They will hunt them down and they will befriend them and they will use them. It's it's a sad situation, but it's just a fact. And that's why the word enabler is such a correct term because you are enabling the OCD person to continue with that and not having them try to put a stop to it because there can, you can put a stop to it. It's just that if they're, as long as they're enabled to keep going, they will never do it. Exactly. And it's very hard on the children of OC. Now, a lot of people will also use their, their children to as enablers, but also as, you know, to fulfill their compulsions. Right. I will say that the caddy man did not do that much, if any, I don't think. That doesn't mean it, it doesn't affect your children because the children oftentimes from the OC parent have a little bit of a lack of affection because the OC person, as we talked about last time, is so busy. I mean, their head is so full and they got so many tasks to perform they lack the ability to provide proper affection for a spouse or children. So a lot of times the children grow up harboring anger. Children of OC people tend to be angry. Hmm. Sadly. Sad but true. Sad but true, but um, luckily I, I don't think I did that. But the... Um, the thing that you do probably do is you don't have the um, you're not with them emotionally as much as you should be you know uh, they're your children you should be there with them emotionally even when you're not there physically with them and I think that that is something that uh, OCD people even when they're not causing the anger problem for the children, you're still not fulfilling some of the needs that your children need. And Well, a lot of times they have the good kid syndrome. They feel like they have to be a good kid because 
some, you know, because mom or dad or whoever's OC needs the attention. Uh, is there anything wrong with that? <laughs> well, it's <laughs> nice having the good kids, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that's kind of the dual-edged sh- sword there. If you ask any parent if they would want their child to be a good kid, not get in trouble, what's that answer going to be? Hell yes, we want that child. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but, uh, yeah. you know. I, I, well, I know one of your, your sons, and uh, I have to say he's he's an impressive human being. You guys did a wonderful job. Oh, we have, we have great kids. We're very lucky, and um, there is hope out there because if you – let your children be a part of the healing process and give them the tools to understand healing is very quickly with it happens very quickly with the children right according to the professionals so um there's a lot of hope i mean um and there's no reason why the kids should not heal right so but it is a sickness shared by the family Therefore, when this person needs to get help, decides to get help, can actually be in it. I mean, you can't make somebody get help until they're ready. You can make them go through the process, but if they're not ready, it won't work. It's kind of like you driving the alcoholic to AA. Until he can drive himself, Right. he's not going to get better. So, you know, the family does have to understand that and be supportive but they also need to be a part of the healing process because the family suffers too right you know and uh you know one thing that hinders getting help is sometimes the cover-up because the oc person will cover up the illness and and actually do it quite well well, they're tra- we're trained professionals. <laughs> and and I, I know that that's a joke, but it's not a joke. If you, do, if you do any task day after day after day after day, and you have mentally made yourself figure out this is the way it's done, this is the time I do it, this is the easiest way, hey, this is the most productive way, I'm telling you, it just look and it and then it could be by repeating it all the time it looks so natural that people they don't get it they right. think god he's a good worker boy he's in tune with that job or blah blah you know all the acclimates and really no you take this guy and send him over and try to do another job and he'll want to blow his brains out because he can't it's thrown his day completely into abomination right and there could be, you know, actually OC can go along and not really affect everybody that much. It, it definitely affects the OC person and probably the spouse. But then you'll have these periods of time where you could, they call it a sudden outburst, where the compulsiveness becomes very intense, okay? And um, this causes chaos and disrupt nearly every part of the family's lives. Right. And this will happen periodically if you're not controlled, medicated, or understand how to take care of the problem. And these episodes can be crazy, and that can go on for, you know, they can go on for a couple of years or more. Right. It can be absolutely crazy. So work out a solution, wonder, understand and you know the fallout what can happen if this gets out of hand i mean you, like i said the other day you can't let little things go like the closet being ultra organized because right. this is rewiring the brain and then you can have these crazy chaotic episodes right these these sudden outbursts so beware of that understand the illness okay but don't pamper them or enable them. Um, hopefully, like like I said, I think last week, they don't find others that will, but they probably will find them. And that's kind of a cra- crazy phenomenon. 
they will right. do uh, a person with OCD will just about do what it takes to make sure they keep their chain of events going. Um, exactly. It's it's just a sickness that they built up over time, and it's been going on for such a long time. A lot of people have it very bad that they think that they will die if they don't do it, or they think that one of your kids will die, or I mean, it gets very very bad. I didn't have that way, but I did have the obsession that if I, there were certain things that if I did not get done, I would have a bad day, or something would happen, or change things, and uh, it's, uh, you, well, you can't Well, there's a lot of social anxieties involved, there's sometimes sexual anxieties, because they start worried about Right, it's living in might. fear. Well, they don't want to lose control. Right. Because, let's face it, if you have these obsessions and compulsions, you have such a need to control everything. So that's why they uh, avoid many close, intimate situations. And that's why they will sometimes also seek out these people to help enable them. Because they want people that don't require intimacy to enable them. Right. It, it's a it's a really strange thing, um, and sometimes regression occurs. Howard Hughes regressed to age two, so be careful. Don't allow a group sick or a family sick, where you're you're all giving into it so much that the whole damn family's sick. Right. Um, do you have and, anything to yeah, add well, to that? And, well, I was just going to say that uh, most of the time. The OCD person will be attracted to someone who has OCD of some sort. And they might not show it either, but it's like a uh, connection. You both have some sort of uh, affliction that you have to get done, and it's like one enables the other. And, the, and of course, like we said last, the way to stop it is you can't enable it. You have to stop it and make it, make the chain. You've got to break the chain. Got to. Right. Because and then it never quits if you don't. And so, the first step, go ahead. So the first part and the most important part is recognizing when you're doing that. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And we should have um, probably mentioned the four steps. Relabel, that means recognize that you're having a intrusive thoughts we attribute realize the intensity of, of the thought okay and then refocus focus on something else and then revalue understand that OCD is not you right okay? it's not in my character right it, it, it's not your character but also one of the very first steps to for the family to move on and the person is forgiving OCD and forgiving it together. In fact, one of the very first things that um, Caddy Man gave me was a, a, a poem that said, to forgive is the highest, most beautiful form of love. In return, you will receive untold peace and happiness. Hmm. Family members are the key to success. Um, right, support. And, and to the healing process. You know, um, co-conspirators in OCD can cause totalitarianism, and and that, that is because sometimes people don't want the other piece, person to get well because they're enablers. Right. Um. Yeah. In the book, he suggests that you don't push, you don't rush. Um, understand that. People with OCD are very clever at hiding it. They will lie about it. Um, change can cause a new episode, like travel, um, moving. Um, there are other triggers that you can't possibly know that could cause um, a relapse of events. For example, old friends can cause a relapse of events. Right. 
it can be anything. I mean, it can be something that you you never know what it was. You know, it, I mean, if it's like PTSD, it can be a smell. Right. You know. Um, so you never know. Um, but you've got to hope that the person with the OCD at one point at, or at some point in their life wants to get better. Right. Because that's what makes this work. It's just like they say with the alcoholic, you know, he can't have the, when you get headed in the, to the right direction and you and you think you're doing well and you have been doing well, well, it probably wouldn't hurt to just have one. <laughs> yeah. Well, guess, well, guess what? One turns into a hundred. Yeah. Exactly. And so you're right back to where you were because this is an ongoing fight that will, it will kind of suck you in a little bit and let you think you've got it, a handle on it and you lose your, um, I would say your vision, you, you lose, you, you, you just lose sight of it a little and it'll sneak back up and bite you and you'll watch out and you'll be taking a step back. You have to be very, very prepared every day um, to battle this problem, it, but it's fixable. You just have to stay on top of it. Exactly. And it is a family affair. And remember, that there aren't just people in a family. Yes, I've got a great story. Exactly. In the book, it talks about how this girlfriend of a guy that had it really bad, um, she talked about how she didn't notice it at first, they dated in, in any way, and then the more she was around him, and they got closer and closer. She started noticing these things, and she said, my God, this guy's crazy. And she would try to help him, and she could not get him to change. She said, you could set off a bomb next to him, and when he was having a bad day, nothing affected him. He said, to get me, snap me out of it, why don't you take your clothes off and get in front of me, and maybe that will. <laughs> and and so, so, I mean, that's how desperate she was. But then she goes on and says, you're not going to believe this, but it got so bad that our dog, that what was his dog, started mimicking him. Like when he would be kind of sad and down, the dog would be sad and down. When, <laughs> oh, no. when, when they thought they were going to leave, the dog would get this funny look on his face and, <laughs> and act like he'd have breathing problems, <laughs> like he was going into a seizure or something. Because, and she kept saying, see, you and him are the same. See what you're doing? <laughs> well, we have our dog, oh, God. Oliver, who has idiosyncrasies of himself, <laughs> where he has started doing things that we don't know why in the hell he's doing them. But when we put him up at night, he won't go to his cage by coming through the kitchen. He's got to go through the living room. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I threw one of his treats a little bit too far in his cage and it went out the back so therefore he has to circle the cage every night to make sure <laughs> I didn't throw one of the treats too far out and, and, I mean this dog and he gets upset if you change anything oh gosh. oh my gosh he, he does he starts <laughs> panting like like the world like he's having a panic attack oh wow uh... Oh, I mean, it's, it's amazing. So, uh, and, but then it does say in the book. I do want to add this: that there's no scientific evidence that shows that dogs can get OCD. <laughs> However, not yet. I, 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 I'm not. I don't know. I, I'm. They haven't uh, convinced me that that they can't get a little bit of well, it. Well, yeah, I'm, like you said earlier, you're a pro at it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we should take yeah, the pros' and advice. Learn from, you learn from the best, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, you know, whether it, it upsets your dog or not, move that coffee table, do some yoga, do some dance, do whatever, you know. Um, move that coffee table because that is one of the first things we did to help the caddy man get on his road to recovery. We moved that coffee table. 
And we haven't had an urge that we haven't had the nerve to move it back. Yeah, we're afraid <laughs> now to move it back, which is another OC thing, right? Yeah, yeah we, we've, we've, got, we, we've gone thing. over the top yeah, the other way, yeah. I guess. Well, I we're know. having we're having people over this weekend. That coffee table's getting moved back. Yeah. I, what do you bet? The minute they leave, we move it back to the side. Oh my gosh! I'll but take you know that what? bet. Uh, yeah. And you know, uh, we hope everybody has a great weekend. Remember. The thought for the week, walk about in freedom, and also our affirmation. Remember, affirmations are, you know, behaviors you want to achieve, goals you want to achieve, not necessarily that you have achieved them. We are messengers of love, happy, healthy, financially prosperous, great partners and parents. We are charitable, energetic, creative trendsetters that experience success every day. Have a great week. Thanks for listening. Happy 4th of July. Yes, happy 4th of July. Everyone, thanks for listening. And thank you uh, to the Caddy Men and to Grace for sharing your experience uh, with OCD and your wisdom with the world. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Bye, now. Our pleasure. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>